I feel like I did a pretty good job as a husband and a father, but I know that I could have been better had I not been in that situation. I know that that put a strain on like my capacity. I just felt irritated and in pain faster, um, which every, every parent has felt irritated and in pain in the process of parenting. That's, you know, that's a journey on its own. It's amazing. It's loving. It's wonderful. It's a gift. And there's, there's pain and challenge and learning in that too. Um, but everything I experienced, like every challenge felt heavier than it would have. And, um, yeah, my fuse was shorter. I, I'm not the type to, you know, I wasn't screaming. I didn't create an unsafe environment or anything like that, but I felt on edge. As a husband and a father, mm. I, I know that in my real life that I still have my mother's with, she's with us. My dad passed away 19 years ago. My mom is with us. She's, she's aging. And I've got two sets of in-laws that are also with us and they're aging. So I know that they're, it's not the same as losing a sister at the same age. But it's still loss of some kind. And I, I'm wondering how I'm going to show up for them. And I'm wondering how, and it could have been you showed up great, whatever that means, or it could have been that the, it was hard, but I'm curious, how did you show up? What did you learn yeah. for this experience with your wife and your children? going through this. What was what was difficult about this experience, Matt, is that my my daughter was two and a half when we moved back to Milwaukee and knew we were kind of in this this last year and had this painful moment. My okay. son was like six months old. Um, okay. So if you've been a parent and you've had babies and toddlers, you recognize like how much responsibility there is with babies and toddlers and how much crying there is and how many challenges there are. And so for me, like what became really heavy was the weight of responsibility. I felt yeah. so much responsibility, like, you know, in a lot of ways, if I hadn't yet had my kids and it was just me or just me and my wife, um, I probably would have felt a lot lighter because I could have like taken more time to like care for myself and my own needs and my own grief. But like babies and toddlers can't live if we don't take care of them. They need us. And so I felt a weight of responsibility as a father to take care of my children and to provide for their needs. And it, there were many times that I wanted to scream and cry. And there was a child or a toddler screaming yes. and crying. And it felt like screaming and crying in my face. My capacity to like receive the screaming and crying of a to toddler or a baby was like lower. I would, I would feel so much pain when I would hear the screaming and the crying way more than I probably would have if I were in a better state outside of that moment. And so that was yeah. difficult. Um, you know, receiving my wife and whatever her needs were, whatever challenges she was going through, um, yeah. as a, a new mom and a wife and somebody who was grieving my sister's situation in her own way. Like I felt like I had less, I felt so much responsibility as a husband, so much responsibility as a father, so much responsibility as an entrepreneur, so much responsibility to my sister, to my yeah. nieces, to my brothers and my parents who went through their grief journeys and maybe, you know, needed or wanted to lean on me for support. I just felt such a weight of responsibility and it felt so heavy that it drained me and overwhelmed me. And my, my, I was so much faster to be irritated. Like I, yeah. I, I, there were times I just like had to walk away from situations that I would have rather leaned into because I didn't have the emotional energy to lean into, uh, this conversation with my wife or to lean into this conversation with my, my toddler. And yeah. I feel like, I feel like I did a pretty good job as a husband and a father, but I know that I could have been better had I not been in that situation. I know that, that put a strain on like my capacity. I just felt irritated and in pain faster, um, which every, every parent has felt irritated and in pain in the process of parenting. That's, you know, that's a journey on its own. It's amazing. It's loving. It's wonderful. It's a gift. And there's, there's pain and challenge and learning in that too. Um, but everything I experienced, like every challenge felt heavier than it would have. And, um, yeah, my fuse was shorter. I, I'm not the type to, you know, I wasn't screaming. I didn't create an unsafe environment or anything like that, but I felt on edge yeah, all the time. So I know I wasn't at my best. Yeah. Well, thank you for going deep with us into that very, uh, very challenging subject and yeah, thank you for honoring your 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 sister by, by 
by caring and for showing up for your family because you're here today. Uh, and let's talk about today. Yeah. Let's talk about your business today. I, Because I was going down the rabbit hole looking at your business and looking at you on LinkedIn and on the internet and fascinating. Can you talk a little bit about your business, the, the mission behind your business first, please? Yeah. So Faith to Influence, I, I really started this business. Initially, it was a men's group, a Christian men's group. I, I think I mentioned this before, either in our conversation before, maybe on the podcast episode, but it was a mm-hmm. Christian men's group. And the reason I decided to start this business is I was working for another coaching organization that was very personal development focused and professional development focused and was doing good work, but it was becoming like like many coaching businesses in the marketplace today, spiritual without being Christian. And there ultimately became a divide eventually after a certain amount of time there where I just felt like it wasn't fully in alignment with my faith. And so I wanted to be able to serve entrepreneurs, but I wanted to like bring faith into it. I wanted to integrate all parts of what we're doing into the work that I was doing, uh, all parts of our life, faith and family and business. And like, see, can we win effectively in all these areas? Can we be the same person in all these areas? Can we bring integrity into all these areas? And so it started that way. But as I had success with my business early on, like my heart has really become to help Christian entrepreneurs fulfill their dreams, bring their businesses to life. And I want to do it in a high integrity way. Uh, For me, I know that so many people have old stories about what sales is. They think sales is going to be this bad thing, sleazy, greedy, painful. It's going to be judgmental. There's going to be rejection. It's going to hurt. They'd have to be a different person to be successful in sales. And I I know that sales when done right can feel like leadership. Sales when done right can feel like coaching with an invitation at the end of it. Sales when done right, I even believe can feel like love, an expression of love. If it's done right, it helps people get more of what they want or become more of who they were created to become. And so I want to stand for changing the way people feel about sales and making it a positive experience for both sides, whether a purchase is made or not. And I want to be influential and making it easy as possible for the right people to say yes. 